Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto summoned the monster girls. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Everything hurt. Uh. The boy that looked about 15 years old raised his head from the snow, only to see nothing but white stretching across the horizon. His lips, cracked and frozen opened a little, only to close not long after. Where? Where was he? He didn't say anything, but the boy wanted to survive. And thus, he stood on a pair of wobbly legs and decided to find some sort of shelter. It was cold outside. Oh, so very cold. Fortunately for him, after a few minutes of walks, he saw a pretty decent cave and was quick to enter it, where he immediately knelt at the very end of the said cave, hugging his knees and rubbing his hands together to get some warmth his body wanted. Of course, as he did this, his mind went for miles. Where was he? No. W who am I? Everything was blank in his mind. He can't remember anything, not even his name, where he came from, or the reason he was in the middle of the Garden of Snow in the first place. And this terrified him greatly. The coldness in the air, however, didn't let him think much about his situation, as he shivered in coldness when a small gust of cold air passed the area. Looking left and right, the boy saw some dry wood scattered on the ground. The memory came to his mind, where he was all alone in the middle of a thick forest, setting up a bonfire with dry wood. He please work. Teeth chattered, the boy walked to the woods and started to gather them together, and after he did, he began to let his instinct and a small hint of memory do their jobs. Half an hour later, when he was almost out cold from the freezing temperature, the fire was lit. He let out a shaky sigh here as he sat beside the small bonefire he has made, hands stretched out while the palms opened forward to get as much heat as he could get. It was here that he realized that he wore an orange and blue jacket. One hand still stretched forward, the boy used another hand of his to start rummaging through his attire, trying to find something that might let him understand his current situation. A few minutes later, all he found was a frog-shaped wallet with some amounts of money in it and a small card with his photo on it. Naruto Uzumaki. That was his name. Naruto Uzumaki, born in 10 Oct 1XXX. Except for those two pieces of information, however, everything can no longer be read because the card seemed like it had seen a better day back in the past. It was cracked, slightly melted, and practically can no longer be called a card had it not retained its shape and hardness. For the boy, now named Naruto, he was grateful enough that he was able to remember his name and birth date. Yes, it sucked that he wasn't able to get more information, but he was more than happy enough to get what he'd get. I'm hungry. He muttered to himself as he stared at the blizzard happening outside. Here he was hoping to get some edible fruits he'd get. But then again, he won't be able to go outside so long as the blizzard raged on. He might as well get some rest for now. His body was hurting for some reason. Like it just got burned by the sun itself. Later. Five hours later, Naruto woke up fully healed and energized. And much to his delight, the blizzard was no longer there, stopped when he was asleep. Thus, he stood and walked out to see White once again. This time though, there was no blizzard, and thus, he was more than able to handle the cold, despite his attire being by no mean thick or warm. Beautiful. He muttered under his breath the moment he saw the Garden of White surrounding him, a small grin soon plastered his face when he took notice of a small patch of green at the edge of his right sight. That must be the forest. Foods. But that is his thought, the boy began to run toward the forest with an unnatural speed. Nor he knew about this, though. After all, he was yet to meet another human since he woke up in the middle of the snow. Getting fruits was an easy task. Knowing which one he could eat without upsetting his body was a different matter altogether. And thus, after he gathered several types of fruit, Naruto sat cross-legged in front of the small pile of fruits in question with a thoughtful look on his face. Growl. When his stomach rumbled, however, his expression turned sour and desperate. He was hungry. Thus, the boy took a fruit and took a large bite of it. His eyes widened. This is G-O-O-D. The boy laughed happily and started to eat the similar fruit until his stomach was full and satisfied. And after he did, he grabbed the remaining fruits and carried them with his shirt. It'd be wasteful if he didn't bring them with him. Just as he wanted to run back to the cave where he came from, he heard a mysterious sound like a gentle cold breeze of air, followed by a soft, inhuman voice that sounded like a whisper of beckoning. The boy merely blinked his eyes here. Huh. So mysterious. But when the sound can no longer be heard, he shrugged off his shoulders uncaringly and with a large smile on his face, started to walk toward the direction where he came from. Tonight, he'd rest easy. Then tomorrow, he'd start walking around for real to see just where he was exactly and to find another living being except for him. After all, forget intelligent beings, he didn't even see one animal in the forest. 
that was just too strange. Oh, wait, now that he was in a forest, perhaps gathering some more dry wood might not be a bad idea, just in case he lacks wood for his bonfire later this night. Yep. He'd do that. With. Even in a world where humans are prey, fights among monsters were not unusual. Although mostly, this happened because of territorial disputes. Very rarely it happened because of human males. And yet. When a meteorite fell at the tallest and largest mountain in the mountain range of Yamatai region, all monsters thorough the region felt the power hidden inside of it and of course, the scent of male on it. An excellent male specimen. Even the queen of the insect family would kill their hive if it meant getting her hand on such a thing. Fortunately for her, the male didn't move from his position and seemed to stay at the mountain peak. Although he did wander to the nearest forest for a few hours. It was not a problem for her, of course. So long he was at the peak of the mountain, he was in her territory. And so long he was in her territory, the wind and snow were hers to play. Wounded, yet happy at another and probably final victory, she waved her left hand. And just like that, a blizzard began to rage on top of the mountain here as I did, trapping him inside his cave and also making sure no other monsters could get close to the peak except for her. Yamato no Arachi might be a problem had they fought face to face. But the woman had the blood of a dragon inside her veins, despite she was mostly a snake. Cold was the dragon's natural weakness, and thus, she won't be able to charge through the blizzard on her own. This is my victory. The words that came out of her mouth were slow, soft and haunting. And after she said those, the woman began to trek the snow toward the direction of the cave where he resided. Behind her, her large white kimono fluttered madly along with her inhumanly long blue hair. Although soon, she disappeared into the snow, with the only proof of her existence being the frozen corpse of a lizard-based monster girl. He was a bit younger than she expected. Stood a few meters away from the cave's mouth, covered by a thick blizzard, she watched as the boy made bedding with leaves he gathered in the forest. And he was shiny. Yeah shiny was the word she'd use. His hair was yellow, and it shone like a sun when each strand reflected the light of the fire from the bonfire he made. His eyes were blue, like a pair of oceans made into gems and carved into a pair of eyeballs just for him. And unlike most humans who she met in the cold, frozen mountains, the boy's eyes held no sadness nor hopelessness, despite she had sent in some of her cold wind into the cave to weaken him. The smile also never left his face, for some reason. Warmth. Mine. As she kept staring at him, her heartbeat began to get faster in her desire to consume his warmth, to wrap him up in her kimono and take in all of his warmth and his life force by force. Not only that. But the amount of energy she sensed from him, he might even last for a month before he need to take a rest where most human men she raped, met their demise in less than 10 minutes, some even died the moment she embraced them. For the first time in her hundred years of life, she was excited. But Naruto. Great the blizzard got even more fierce than the one he saw several hours ago. Although. It's not that cold. Even when several cold winds passed him, Naruto didn't feel cold at all. It's like, ever since he fully healed, cold can no longer bother him with its frigidness. Just as he thought like this, however, the mysterious voice that he heard back in the forest came back. H-U-M-M-M. -M. It was like a hum. Although it was rather haunting and Kinda tickled his eardrums in a wrong way at first, soon, he shook his head and turned his face toward the direction of the sound, which came from the front of the cave he was in. And then Naruto saw it. A shadow of a woman. Maybe not because losing memories or not, he was pretty sure a woman two times his height was by no means normal. W who's there? He squeaked here, his hand was holding a tree branch that had its tip burned. Don't be afraid boy. Let me give you a warm embrace and make all of your worries disappears. The woman took a step forward, bringing along a harsh gust of cold wind along with her. One that was strong enough to snuff out the fire on the tree branch he held. Fortunately, his bone fire was safe. And because it was safe, Naruto could see the woman's full form after she entered the bright area. She was tall easily two times his height, which meant she was about three meters tall. White kimono adorned her body, covering her form snugly from her neck to her feet, pretty tightly too, since he was able to see so outlines of her figure. Two parts made Naruto blink in wonder. First, her kimono sleeves were way too big and wide, so much that had they didn't levitate in the air, they would have touched the ground for sure. Secondly, her hair was also so long that it would touch the ground if her blue strands didn't levitate. Her height. It was strange too, but who was he to judge someone based on their height, right? For all intent, it might be him who was far too short after all. But warm. Oh. Beautiful one e -san, you want warmth too. Come here, I made a bonfire already. I also have some fruit stored, although I don't know which one are edible. Now that he knew the tall woman only wanted warmth, Naruto was quick to run in her direction and grabbed her by hand, pulling her toward the bonfire, so she could warm herself. And oh, would you look at that her hand was freezing. 
She must have been spending hours in the blizzard. Please sit down here. I'll make some hot water for you. And here, you can eat these fruits while you wait. After he made his visitor sit beside the bone fire, Naruto ran to his bedding and take out a flat rock that he already carved in the middle so that some water can be contained in it. And then he ran outside, gathering the falling snow inside the rock until it was full, then ran back inside. He then finished his activity by hanging the rock above the fire with some vines and branches he found. The H E H E please wait for a few minutes, one he san. It'll take some time before the snow melt and the water boil. Naruto said chirpily at his guest, happy to see the woman didn't chatter her teeth, even though her body was so cold when he touched her. Although, why was she staring at him like that? Did the cold freeze her tongue? A one he san. Is there anything I could help you with? You. For a small second, the woman said that word, although she soon closed her mouth again, as if confused by something he did. Because he was pretty patient, Naruto waited. You're not scared of me? Okay now that was a strange question if he can be honest. Uh, why should I? You were freezing and I just wanted to help you. It's okay one san if it's about your long hair or strange clothes, I don't mind at all. People have their own preference. I won't call you strange if that's what you're scared of. Naruto said honestly and somewhat naively. But then again, he didn't even remember his own name just a few hours ago. So, it was somewhat understandable that he was still a little bit naive about the way of the world. You're strange, boy what if I tell you that I came here to take your warmth? A few times, Naruto blinked his eyes confusedly. That was not a sentence he'd understand even after he repeated it again and again in his mind, for some reason. Can you please use normal wording, one san I kinda don't understand what you mean. For a minute or so, the woman across from Naruto did not answer his words, seemingly trying to find better wording she'd use. I want to kidnap you I want to store you in my sleeve so I could have my way with you every day I want to rape you again and again. So many wordings she'd use to make the boy in front of her understand her desire. But thus far, he had been so kind to her, treating her kindly despite how suspicious all humans treated her the moment they saw her. And thus, she decided. She wanted him as her husband. Treat him as an eternal candy and store him in her sleeve for her everyday use. That too, but she won't be so forceful at it now that she decided that he will be her husband. Rough? Yes. Forceful? Yes. It just won't be life-threatening for him, since she desired not only his body, but also his heart now. I want to sleep with you. The moment Naruto heard those words, a small throb of pain coursed through his head, bringing a short memory along with it, one that he held tightly almost immediately. Naruto remember, as a man, if there's a woman who honestly said she want to sleep with you, you will never, ever refuse, do you understand? And of course, treat her good like she was your other half. Because if a woman asked you to sleep with her, that means she is in love with you. That masculine voice. Master. Naruto didn't really remember who said those words to him or the man's name. However, he remembered that the man who said those words was his teacher his master in the art of art of. He didn't remember that part. Nonetheless, that was what his teacher said to him, and as a student, it was his job to comply with his teacher's teaching. I'd be more than happy to do that, one e san And here I thought you hated me, H-E-H-E-H-E. -E -E. Naruto was happy. Here he was, waking up with no memory to recall, only to meet a woman who confessed her love to him right after they met for the first time. And in his giddiness, Naruto walked in her direction and sat beside her, uncaring of the cold that came from her body. You accepted. There was a hint of disbelief in her tone for some reason, but Naruto simply nodded after he leaned his shoulder against her unnatural tall body. An action that seemed to break her from her thought. Because immediately, her arm was quick to wrap around him in a side hug position, pulling him even closer to her and securing his position beside her. Naruto didn't have any intention to walk away, of course. Yep. Love is a beautiful thing, and my teacher once said if a woman ever said she want to sleep with me, that means she is in love with me. I see that's a strange outlook, but I'm happy that you're not scared of me. My name's Oyuki I'm a Yukiana. I don't understand what a Yukiana is, but my name's Naruto, Naruto Yuzumaki. But Oyuki. Ha. Huh. What a strange human her husband is. Almost lifeless black orbs look down at Naruto, amused at his attempt to ignore the cold her body excludes naturally. An hour or so had passed since they introduced each other, and just a few minutes ago, the boy had wanted to sleep on his bedding, something she didn't let him do. If he wanted to sleep, he had to sleep in her embrace, she told him. Most humans would back away, because to them, to sleep with Yukiana was nothing but a suicide attempt. But Naruto. He climbed on her lap by his own will. He used her wide life-sucking sleeves as makeshift blankets with nothing but innocent naivety in his movement. And before he went to sleep, he even kissed her on the chin and said good night, Oyuki-chan like he truly believed that he was going to see tomorrow's sun. Such childishness. 
such naivety. And none of them were faked at all. To him, she was a stranger who wanted his love, and yet he gave it without a second thought like it was so natural. Like the act of loving a monster was never a sin in his mind. And to Ayuki, it made her want to know him even more. To love him. If you from my mother taught me this, but never I thought I'd get the chance to use it. Like they were alive, Oyuki's kimono sleeves began to move, cocooning the boy on her lap from his head to his feet, with the softness of the highest class of silk, until no skin of his can be seen from the outside. Inside his cage, Naruto struggled unconsciously from the cold Oyuki's sleeves excluded. SHHH don't move it'll get better soon. After every inch of the sleeves her kimono had gone to wrap her husband, Oyuki cut off her connection with them, which made them turn into normal silk fabrics, instead of Yukiana's extension. That should warm him up. Still. As she looked down at the form of her cocooned husband, Oyuki started to think just how ridiculous it was that she came to rape and treat the boy as a toy for years to come, only to end up falling in love with him. Oh well. He was still going to end up as her toy, and she was still going to rape him till his balls dry. Nothing actually changed except for the fact he'll become her husband on top of those. Just one small change. Time skip. Come on, Oyuki-chan. I can't wait to see the places you told me about UKNOW. As he ran across the heavily snowed mountain, Naruto laughed because he was in high spirits today. As for the reasons well, Oyuki just told him about his whereabouts and the surrounding locations nearby. From what he'd remember, he was actually at the largest mountain of the mountain range surrounding Yamatai village. East of his location was the Yamatai village in question, while on the south was a large forest called Plant Sect Forest. North. North was a large sea that'll lead to nowhere, from what she said. Now, Oyuki was not happy when he told her about his wanting to see the world. But she relented after he told her about his inability to remember anything prior to his experience at the mountain. Amnesia, she called his condition. Just as he thought like this, Naruto stumbled on something white, which made him fall face first on the snow. Step. Step step. I told you slow down. Ah sorry, I'm just so excited. Naruto flipped his body so he faced upward the moment he noticed Oyuki was coming closer, looking down at him with her usual cold expression. He gave her a large grin for the answer. Small it was, Oyuki let out a small sigh as she knelt and helped him to stand, which Naruto accepted with a small thanks. If you run again, I'll wrap you up and carry you on my back for the rest of our walk. The Yuki Ana said, threatening him with something most humans wouldn't want. But it was only when she finished her words that she knew her wrong. Naruto was not most human. And he proved this when he said his next words. B, I mean, I don't mind it at all. You're just too tall, you know. Even your legs are taller than my whole body, Oyuki-chan. The boy said while poking her thigh, something that made Oyuki realize just how small her love was compared to her. Well, most humans in the world stood at one. Five to one. Seven meters or about four. Nine to five. Five feet. Some rarities do exist, though, like the current king of Sabasa Kingdom, for example, but even the man only stood at one. Nine meters or about six. Two feet in height. Compared to her who stood at three whole meters which is equal to nine. Eight feet. Even the tallest man among humans was nothing but a child to her. And compared to other monsters, she was far from the biggest. Humans. Not only they were tiny, but they were also weak and short-lived such a pitiful existence. I guess that's true come here let me carry you. Slightly saddened by her thought, Oyuki knelt and spread her arms, waiting for her lover to embrace her by his own will. Okay why? She didn't need to wait long, because as soon she spread her sleeves, Naruto was quick to glomp her excitedly, resting his face on the nape of her neck, and seemingly uncaring that his lower body was submerging in the middle of her clothed bosom. Small it was, the edges of Oyuki's lips tugged upward as she then stood, supporting her husband's weight with her arms acting as his seat. And no she didn't wrap him up with her kimono. Why? A uh, why indeed. Hey Naruto. Yes. Because his face already went forward, Naruto had to crack his neck backward until he'd see the face of his lover above his head. All the while unconsciously grinding the back of his head onto her neck, tickling her skin with the softness of his hair. Oyuki answered this action by giving him a small kiss on the temple. Next time a woman say she want to sleep with you, make sure that you get something out of it money or anything you could use. Naruto was smiling happily after he got a small kiss on the temple. But the moment he heard Oyuki's words, he blinked several times in confusion until he was sure that he did not mishear it. Why? Because not all women might sleep with you because of love. Some just want a pleasure a male could give. I don't understand. I lost my memories, remember? Yes and that's why, you just need to place a price if a woman wanted to sleep with you after all, if she is really in love with you, a few thousands gold coins should be easy to get. 
Naruto still didn't understand the meaning behind it, but he trusted Oyuki, and she had to have a good reason for saying those words to him. And thus, he nodded at her with a large smile on his face. Okay, I'll do that. But boy. Naruto, wake up we're here. Naruto opened his eyes when he was nudged awake by his lover, Oyuki. And the moment he did, he saw a nice looking village in front of him, bustling with activities despite it was currently at night time. Whoa. Whoa. Just as he was staring in awe at the beautiful village, two women suddenly appeared in front of him and Oyuki, brandishing a weapon of their choice in their hands. One woman wore an attire of a kanoichi, complete with a cloth mask that covered her lower face and two kunai in her hands. The other woman was the opposite and wore an attire that looked like a samurai, albeit pretty revealing for one. Her katana, however, looked sharp and real enough that Naruto shivered a little bit in fear. Oyuki sensed this and found herself didn't like it. Like a protective barrier, the Yuki on his sleeves began to move and actively hover protectively around Naruto. At the same time, the ground beneath her began to freeze. The two guards narrowed their eyes here, suspicious at the strange gesture. Yuki Ana, for what reason have you come to this peaceful village? And who is he? I knew your deeds, caring for one man is not in your nature. The Yuki Ana did not answer for a whole minute, her eyes, however, were watching the two like a hawk watching its prey. And when the samurai elf's hands twitched a sign of attack a large icicle was conjured almost instantly, impaling her palm through her forearm. At the same time, several more icicles came from the ground around her, which made the Kinoichi elf back away. Ah! Screamed in pain, the left with samurai attire jumped back, holding her bleeding arm in pain. It was only when she looked at the boy and saw him get cocooned by Yukiana's infamous kimono, did she relax her guard just a little. Yukiana only let two types of creatures touch their sacred kimono. One their prey. And second, their chosen mate. I see you just needed to say that you found your mate, you stupid snowflake. Again, Yuki Ana did not answer her words, despite this time it was a ridiculing word. Nonetheless, the samurai elf sheathed back her katana because now she knew that Yuki Ana won't hurt anyone in the village. Beside her, her friend followed suit. I don't talk to monster weaker than me and don't misunderstand, had my husband didn't want to come to this village, I'd never do too. After Wayuki said those words, she began to walk to the village, ignoring two elves that had just got beaten behind her. All the while, the two in question were looking at her back with disbeliefs on their face. Geez her ego really struck you in the nerves, didn't it? The Kinoichi elf said to her friend who was tending to her bloodied arm, trying to lift the mood. Alas, her friend took it as a real question. Understandable she was unofficially the ruler of Yamatai mountain range, and for a hundred of years, no one was able to take this title away from her. Her strength was also almost equal to Yamada no Orochi-sama. Her ego, well it pissed me off, it's still understandable. Plus, I'm glad that she found a mate at last so many visitors tried to come, only to be killed by her. Yuhi I just hope the monster who'll take her place won't be as bad as hers. The Kinoichi elf said with a small shrug of her shoulders. Most if not almost all Yukiana was a calm bunch, who desired to find a husband more than anything in the world. Yes, they kill men, and wrap them up in their kimono before they absorb the men's vitality, but their objective was always to find a worthy husband. But Oyuki. Oyuki alone had the gall to kill every human who stepped onto her mountain, men and women alike without discrimination. Hell, from the rumor, it was said that 100 Yukiana didn't like her attitude and decided to banish her, but all alone, Oyuki killed all of them and took their sacred kimono as her trophies. That was also the reason that unlike most Yukiana who stood at 2 to 2. 5 meters at most, Oyuki alone stood taller than them. So true, and did you see that woman's mate? I did. He was so cute. And he smells thousand times better than most guys in the villages. Ha that he did. No wonder even that bloodthirsty woman took him as a mate. Good morning, Naruto-sama. Thank you for your blessing today, Naruto-sama. Naruto walked down the shrine stairs only to get several kind greetings from the villagers, all of which he responded in kind with smiles and kind words. As for why they were acting so kind to him. Well. Two days ago when he came to the village he actually slept in an abandoned hut and was more than happy if the villagers were to let him sleep there. But when the morning came, the two guards had told the village's elder about him being the husband of the mountain lord, Oyuki. And the elder was devastated when he knew that such a precious guest was sleeping in a broken and dusty hut. Thus, he had the villagers' approval to sleep in the biggest shrine so long he didn't let his wife wander around. To him, they were funny. After all, what was to fear from Oyuki? The H E H E H E. As he walked around the village and took in all scenes he'd seen, Naruto laughed a little in happiness and amusement. Behind him, Oyuki raised her left eyebrow in confusion after she heard his laugh. Why are you laughing? Hmm. Like always, Oyuki's voice was soft and didn't hold any volume whatsoever. It's like, the act of talking itself was a chore to her. 
And thus, Naruto had to look up at her for a few seconds to digest her words. And after he did, the boy smiled happily. Well, you know. It's just so funny to me that the villagers seem to be scared of you I mean, you're such a gentle and kind woman. Uncaring of some eyes that were watching them, Oyuki knelt until her knees touched the ground which froze instantly. And after she did, her palm stretched forward, caressing the cheek of her naive and innocent husband, an act that made him close his eyes pleasantly. A soft, small smile soon could be seen on her lips. Just ignore them. To me, they're insignificant because so long you're beside me, I'm happy. H-E-H-E-H-E, you're so R-O-M-A-N-T-I-C. Seemingly didn't know the hidden meaning behind the Yuki Anas, Naruto tittered happily after he gave her a small kiss on the chin. And after he did, Oyuki stood once again and made a makeshift umbrella with her kimono for both of them, because she knew her husband was still far from satisfied with his sightseeing. And to her, that was a good thing, after all, the sooner he finished his sight watching in this village, the sooner they'd get out. She didn't want to clash with a stupid seven-headed snake if she can help it. Or was it nine? Oh well, the number of heads Yamada had was unimportant compared to her current date with her husband. That I do, Naruto that I do. Yuha let's go there. I can smell something g-o-o-d. Just as Oyuki tried to fish for another compliment, Naruto grabbed her by the arm and pulled her along with rather surprising strength, the boy's nose was twitching madly as he did this. It took them less than 10 minutes of running before in the end, they stopped in front of a nice looking Raymond stand. And the moment he saw it, Naruto's eyes shone like a kid in a candy shop. Ramin. Give me 10 bowls, please. For the first time since she met him, Oyuki was left flabbergasted when her husband ignored her in favor of a salty food called Raymond. What the? He lost his memories, right? After a full minute, she stood there, flabbergasted and in disbelief, it was only then Naruto remembered her. Oyuki-chan, come here. It's Raymond. I'm sure you like it for sure, it's a food of gods, after all. In his seat, Naruto was trembling in excitement for some reasons unknown to his mate. But Oyuki soon decided to amuse him as she took the seat beside him, patting his cheek a little to calm him down. Her action succeeded at doing this, just a little. Naruto, calm down. The stand's not going anywhere. Shyly, Naruto soon scratched the back of his neck while laughing in embarrassment. I guess you're right. And you should get your order, Oyuki-chan. I don't eat hot foods, Naruto. Honestly, had she didn't know that her mate was amnesiac, Oyuki would have been offended by now with how many times he made mistakes when it comes to her preferences. He pushed her toward a bonfire, gave her fruits when her race didn't eat something so normal. And now, he wanted her to eat a bowl of hot food. But then again, it was her fault too because she was never vocal about her dislikes, nor she ever told him what she meant when she said that she is a Yukiana. Oh, that's too bad. As her mate began to honestly feel upset for her, Oyuki once again realized just why she cannot truly be annoyed at him. He was just so sincere that she can't help but forgive him every time he made a mistake. Here the first bowl, A-D-O-R-A-B-L-E. Before she'd be open about her dislike, however, a woman in red kimono placed a bowl of ramen in front of Naruto, one that he immediately Eno inhaled like it was some kind of air. Delicious. Please keep it coming. Here, here, cutie. As the woman in red walked to the kitchen, another woman this time in blue kimono walked forward and placed the second bowl of ramen. Followed by another woman in yellow kimono who placed the third bowl beside the second. Through all of this, Naruto kept eating the incoming food, uncaring of the three women's giggles and the flirty looks they sent at him. Well, not uncaring. He just didn't notice it. Oyuki did, but since she already told her mate that every woman who wanted to sleep with him had to pay, he should be alright. Plus, she already told him that if a woman wanted such a thing, they had to pay a fee of a few thousand gold coins. People could live comfortably for a whole month with that amount of money. What did it mean for her? Well, whether her mate sleep around with other monster women was not something she care about. Yes, Yukiana was a possessive bunch, and she too was somewhat possessive toward her mate. But he was not a treasure she could take for herself. Naruto's aura was felt through the whole Yamatai area when he fell, and that was when he was weakened. And now he was regaining his vigor, sooner or later, even monsters from other continents might be able to sense him. She would need more than herself to protect him from some clingy and hoarding monster girls. Erp. Ah. I'm so full. Naruto said happily, fully satisfied after he ate more than 30 bowls of delicious ramen. And not only him, even the sisters who owned the ramen stand were also happy to see him enjoying the food they made. So many people did, but none of them showed it by eating more than 30 bowls of ramen in one sitting. The older sister of three women, the one with the blue kimono, stepped forward with a strange smile on her lips. We're so happy that you enjoyed our food so much, cutie. Are you going to pay now? Naruto paused at the strange wording she used. 
but this lasted for a mere brief second because soon, he merely gave the woman a small nod, followed by a kind smile on his lips. Of course, can I use these? Taking out his frog-shaped wallet, Naruto take out several amounts of money he had in it. But it was only when he saw the three sisters' confused eyes that he scratched the back of his head. Are they no good? Yeah I'm sorry, adorable. But we never seen money like these before. Are you sure you're from around here? The blonde shook his head, more than willing to tell his tale to the three sisters who made such delicious ramen for him. Actually, no. I woke up on top of the tallest mountain west of here without my memory. And in my pockets, this wallet and a card with my name on it are the only things I could find. Oh my I'm sorry to hear that. Naruto nodded a little, grateful for the woman's kind words. But soon, he once again realized that he was yet to pay for the food he ate. He began to play with his fingers here in nervousness. I have no other monies except for these. See can I repay you three with something else? For a few seconds, the three sisters stared at each other. And then at the same time, they nodded and turned their attention back to the adorable customer they took a liking to. Sleep with us this night. Naruto's mouth went into an O shape for a few seconds, but he didn't find it strange that much. Just as he wanted to agree, however, Oyuki cut him off. He can't do that tonight. If you want, the three of you could sleep with him a week from now on take it or leave it. The three sisters flinched at the same time when Oyuki who had been silent, suddenly speak with a cold tone in her voice. But since she didn't seem to mind lending his mate for them a week from now on, the trio nodded with large grins on their faces. And for a quick second, their tongue flickered out, each was far longer than the tongues normal humans had. Deal, a week from now on, from night till the morning. There was no vocal agreement from Oyuki. Nonetheless, she did give them a small nod to show her own agreement with their demand. Let's go, Naruto. I'm sure you're sleepy after you ate so many food. After the Yukiana said these, she took her mate by the armpits and started to walk back home with him in her arms. Of course, Naruto struggled for a few seconds. He wanted to take another look at several areas in the village. And he just woke up less than two hours ago. B.A. Come on, Oyuki chan There are so many things we could SMPHMMN. Didn't want him to argue, a small part of Oyuki's kimono sleeve flew and entered his mouth, gagging him with its softness and muffling the words he wanted to say with ease. Following this action, the magical sleeves continued until they fully cocooned Naruto in white silk of softness. Of course, the cocoon stretched and twitched, but it didn't take long before the person inside calmed down. And through all of this, the elder sister of three Raymond stand owners made a small note for herself and her sisters. Big sis, did you see that? The woman in the red kimono said with a small, hidden titter. The blue one nodded and showed her note to her two sisters. Yes, the cutie become cuter when his body is fully bound. And for us, that shouldn't be a problem, right? Ufufu. Her sister's laugh soon followed her own. They can't wait. Later. Boyuki chan why are we doing this? It's still 9 in the morning. Naruto sat on his lover's lap, face slightly red, because Oyuki ordered him to strip the very second they entered their bedroom. With nothing covering his body, everything felt so much better. Oyuki's soft lap under him. Her soft kimono-clad breasts were pressing against his chest and her hand's gentle caress on his back. Everything felt so cold, but for some reason, each movement she did make his heart skip a beat. And this only made his cheeks get even redder. Look at you now getting all red and shy the moment you go nude had I knew this which of yours. Oyuki let those words hang in the air as she leaned down her face until it was resting on her mate's neck, where she let out her chilling breath. Naruto shivered, both from the cold and delight. His hands went to her shoulders, gently holding her and not really trying to push her away. What she was doing to his body he liked it. Nnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnn
And as she did this, she gave him a gentle pat on the head. Oh oh. She was happy, but she didn't stop her explanation. Boyuki said, finishing her explanation. Although, she didn't say how the ritual itself going to be done. Naruto didn't pry, because he was busy snuggling against his dearest lover's breasts, despite the chilly embrace she gave him. MNNI I want to get closer to you too. Naruto said shyly while his face was hidden in the middle of his lover's bosom. Boyuki answered him by tightening her embrace on him and increasing the chilliness of it just a little bit, something that made him cling to her body even more than before. Cute. She did not say anything, but once she was sure that her mate was comfortable with his position, Oyuki tightened her embrace on him for the last time, until none of his body skin could be seen from the outside. Not even his adorable eyes could be seen by her even if he looked up. Cold was his friend. Darkness engulfed him. And once he got used to all of these, she'd be able to do everything she planned for him without any fear of injuring him. Sleep well my love. After she said those words, Oyuki made the rest of her sleeves and ten other sacred kimono she had into a protective ball surrounding her and her mate. And for the first time in her life, Oyuki closed her eyes and became one with the cold that was embracing her love. With two guards. Hey, did you hear? That Yukiana became a ball of kimono along with her husband. Yes, I've heard about it. That's Yukiana's pre-marriage ritual, where they become one with their sacred kimono and the cold itself. And for days, weeks, or even years, they'll stay like that until the man get used to the lowest temperature a Yukiana could exclude, I heard some rumor about some pair of Yukiana, and their mate died in this ritual. The man could stay alive without food or water, because the Yukiana will share her life force with him through the ritual. But the Yukiana in question had a finite life force, and once her reservoir emptied, death for her and her mate was a guarantee. But then again, death was a common thing in this world more so for men population. Death from rape. Death from being eaten. Thus, death in a rather romantic ritual was not strange, all things considered. Oh, do you think that adorable boy going to be alright? I think so. Even now, his aura is getting stronger and not weaker he should be out in a few days at most. Are you sure you don't want to talk about Yamada no Arachi instead? The samurai elf said toward her companion, and her words made the usually compassed Kanoichi elf scratch the back of her neck in slight nervousness. I mean she rejected the villager's latest sacrifice you think she's going to thrash a farm soon. The samurai-like elf nodded. Yes. Ever since the meteorite fell, that selfish woman stopped her diet altogether and only want to eat the man who fell along with it sooner or later, she'll probably realize that the guy in question is in this village. The aura. The scent. Everything about the boy Oyuki chose as a mate led her to believe that the guy inside the meteorite was him. Hell, any other monster girls around Yamatai could tell as much the moment they lay their eyes on him. He was a rarity a delicacy, one could say. Yeah, I just hope he are run away from this village before that selfish woman found him. The Kanoichi elf piped in. Now, many, or almost all humans in the village revered Yamada no Arachi like some kind of divine god. But then again, every monster was a god or god's envoy in the villager's eyes. They were a strange bunch of humans, but Tamamo no Mei herself blessed this land and the people on it. Anyway. The human villagers revered Yamada no Arachi, but the monsters living around Yamatai felt the opposite. As for the reason well, she was selfish. She took the highest quality male the village had and drained him dry for a whole year until her scent and aura practically stuck on him, something that turned off most monster girls around the guy in question. If she found out that the guy who fell with the meteorite was in the village. She'll take him for eternity, that's for sure. And of course, the fight that would happen between the unofficial lord of the land and the unofficial lord of the mountain would definitely devastate the land. Monsters. Humans. Animal. Every living being in a mile's radius could die if two monsters that hold lord class decided to clash. Say, why are we not panicking again? I mean, Tamamo-sama will surely come if two lord class monsters clash and stop them. Tamamo no Mei. Even the lord class monsters will tremble before the presence of such a legendary figure. Hell, from the rumor, even the current monster lord herself was trained by the nine-tailed Kitsune. I guess that's true. The Amitai villagers were a strange bunch, but no matter how strange their way was it worked. You don't need to attack them. Hungry? Ask for food. Tired? They'll gladly give you a massage. Thirsty for semen? They'll give you some of the brightest men they had. The best part of all of these was everything was done naturally and without any act whatsoever. They truly believed from their hearts that monster girls were envoys of gods and thus had to be treated with the utmost respect. And this selflessness got them an ally in the form of one of the strongest monsters that ever lived, Tamamo no Mei. It was still funny when they treated even a villainous character like Yamada no Orochi with respect, though. Ah I want to taste that cutie semen. I'm skip. Yawn. Naruto woke up with a large yawn that immediately got covered by Oyuki's large bosom. 
Oh yeah he was training. For five minutes or so, Naruto was consent inside the darkness, snuggling his face against his lover's bosom. But after he did this, he tried to look up only to see darkness too. Good morning my little snow. Before he could call Oyuki's name, the woman in question shifted the arm above his head and let him see her face that was smiling down at him. Her white skin complexion. Her blue locks. Her dark almost bored looking eyes. And her smile. Everything about her was beautiful to him. And when he saw her smile, pink painted his cheeks as a small feeling of embarrassment began to fill his heart. He didn't know why, but when Oyuki looked at him with so much passion behind her gaze, it tickled his heart pleasantly. Gee good morning to you too, Oyuki-chan are we done with the training? His mate didn't give him an answer to the question and merely tugged her lips upward, widening her already beautiful smile into a gorgeous one. She followed this action with a small movement of her hips. A-H-N. Pleasure like no other suddenly hit Naruto out of the blue, which made him let out a small sound between a surprised scream and mule. Confused, Naruto looked down, only to realize that his penis was already deeply buried inside his mate's freezing vagina. He looked up again here, pouting from the middle of Oyuki's clothed breasts because she startled him. Ufufu such an adorable reaction you got there my mate. Instead of apologetic, Oyuki was laughing. She was happy to see that her mate was just fine, despite she was embracing him with all of her coldness and frigidness, something that'd kill normal humans in less than 10 seconds. Even her vagina, the coldest part of her body began to leak out cold liquid as excitement slowly built up deep in her heart. Don't laugh. Not happy, Naruto bit Oyuki's clothed breast just a little to stop her from laughing. She did. Her hand that was on his waist also went down, grabbing him by his butt cheek for some reason unknown to him. He got his answer when she began to move. MNN. It was slow, but every movement Oyuki did with her hips brought Naruto to the edge almost immediately. There were also these strange cold and soft bumps inside her vagina, and every time she moved, these bumps squeezed him like he was some kind of cow to milk. In less than a minute, Naruto was already breathing hard. His mate shushed him. SSSSH don't be so tense let me do everything just relax in this dance of love we're doing. Her voice came from the air itself, and her words calmed Naruto down as he slowly left everything to his mate. His will, his acceptance, and his love. After Naruto focused his mind on those feelings, he nodded his head and buried his face even deeper in his lover's breasts. Oyuki's kimono front part sprang to life and captured his whole body in one movement, pressing his body against her frigid skin itself. Naruto's answer was to give stuck his face to the inner side of her soft boobs. Sometimes, he'd bite the flesh just a little when a jolt of pleasure hit his body or just kisses it with his lips. This time, the Yukiana let him do this as she kept moving her waist forward and backward. Oh Oyuki, I'm close. There was no answer, but after Naruto said his words, the bumps inside Oyuki's vagina sprang to life and began to assault his male member mercilessly, at the same time squeezing it to the limit. And when the strange pleasure hit his body, Naruto pressed his face against his mate's sternum. At the same time, his hands clawed on her waist. MNNPH. Spurt. Spurt. After Naruto came for a whole five seconds, he didn't feel any warmth that supposedly came with his juice. It was as if, the moment they came out, Oyuki's vagina gulped them down to the very last drip. Still. Just as he wanted to pull back his member, the bump squeezed it tightly and didn't let him go. Naruto looked up at his mate, confused. And when he did, the kimono covered her breasts opened up by itself, which let the boy trapped beneath the clothing see the face of his Yukiana lover once again. She was smiling at him with gentleness. Her words were stated as a threat as if she was going to force it on him if he didn't accept. But Naruto, in all of his naivety and innocent, did not hear the veiled threat and merely widened his eyes for a few seconds before he nodded somewhat excitedly, he even gave her a small, soft kiss on the sternum at the end. While at first pretty loud, the moment Naruto's sentence kept going, his voice began to get meeker and shyer. In his eyes, a telltale of embarrassment could be seen oh so easily. Of course, Oyuki heard everything he said too. It locked his fate for the days to come. Time skip. In the end, it took Oyuki and Naruto four days to finish their ritual. Not because any of them reached their limit, but because Oyuki's stomach cannot take any more kum from him. From what she said to her new husband, his kum was very potent, and this potency slowed down the digestion process, wherever normal human's kum can be digested almost instantly by monster girls. The blonde didn't understand, but he nodded as if he did. Where should we go today, Oyuki-chan? And thus, here they are in front of the shrine where they sleep so long they lived in Yamatai village. And just like a few days ago, Naruto was determined to explore the village and the areas around it. Maybe he could get some hint about his identity if he was lucky. You can go on your own today, husband. Eh? Why? 
Confused at his Yukiana lover's behavior, Naruto turned around and looked up at her with confusion glinting in his eyes. Oyuki gave him a loving pat on the head for this show of adorableness. I'm going to find some work to get us some gold. Here, Naruto's eyes narrowed in thought. But shouldn't we do something that together? You know with us being lover and all. Naruto lost his memories, but even then, he was pretty sure that man and woman had to work together in harmony when it comes to money making. Oyuki's kiss on his temple broke him from his thought. For Naruto, that sounded more than lovely. But. He still kinda felt bad. Although, one look at his mate's expression made him realize that Oyuki's decision was unchanged. MNN, if you say so. I do say so now go if you want to play, remember to get back before the sunset though. I will. See you later, and I love you, Oyuki-chan. And thus, Naruto ran off from the shrine area toward the places he wanted to go, leaving Oyuki all alone standing in front of their resting place. And she was holding her stomach with a thoughtful expression on her face. Naruto. The second she tasted his juice, along with his vitality and life force, she almost lost her mind from how delicious everything was. It was just so unreal. Now, if she ate any other male's kum, she was pretty sure she was going to puke, simply because she'd still remember the taste of life force and kum of the men she killed. And compared to Naruto's kum, theirs were trash. Not like she was going to do that though, since women from the Yukiana race live and die as long their mates alive and could survive from his love alone. They don't even need their semen to survive. Anyway back to her mate. Did she make a mistake when she told him that he could sell sleep with any woman interested in him, albeit with a fee? With how delicious his semen is, it won't be a surprise if a monster girl decided to keep him for herself, uncaring of his feelings or freedom after she tasted his juice. Such a difficult question. I'll think about this later. For now, she needed to find a job to support both herself and her mate. Yukiana. An extremely rare monster that only lives in the mountains of the Amatai region. Able to chill the air at will, it said she is able to create blizzards. In the rare case that she falls in love with a man, it said she will take the form of a human woman and press him into marriage. This marriage belief is mostly handed down through stories of the Amatai region. Oh no wonder why Yuki-chan was confused when I was not afraid of her. Sitting in a library that Yamatai village had, Naruto was reading a book titled Monsterpedia. Of course, he was just casually reading when he stumbled on the page that immediately got his attention. Yukiana, that's what Oyuki-chan is, from what she told him. She seemed dangerous from the book, for some reason. But well. Most monsters inside were stated as dangerous. Well the only one he read as not really dangerous was Nekamata. A friendly monster towards humans. They rarely attack humans, but may if they are starving. At times they may forcefully mate with a human, so care is still required. They are surprisingly agile and quick-footed, so they should not be underestimated despite their friendly appearance. Unique to her race of monster, the Nekamata's vagina has a rough sensation to it. Easily capable of overpowering their partner with pleasure, men will ejaculate quickly after being inserted in their high-quality genitals. Other than human semen, they love dried bonito. Like normal cats, they love walking around, basking in the sun, and living selfish lives. See? Not really dangerous, but even then, the writer still wrote so care is still required in it. So strange. Growl. And now he's hungry. Gigi. Can I borrow this book? Because the library held no one except for him, Naruto yelled those words to the old man sitting behind the counter. And for a few seconds, the man in question squinted his eyes to see which book Naruto was holding. Naruto helped the man by raising the book in the air. Oh ho, that book. You can have it if you want, Naruto. You'll need it if you really wish to explore the world. Really? Thanks Gigi. With a free book in hand, Naruto ran out of the library with a large smile on his face. Because Yamatai village was pretty big, it took Naruto about half an hour before he arrived at the nearest forest. And when he did, he let out a small hum and started to look left and right to find some fruits he could eat. His new book was strapped to his belt. Oh I should have borrowed a book about fruits too. Naruto complained to himself for forgetting something so important. After all, he was yet to know which fruit he could safely eat and which ones are not safe to eat. Alas, a detour back to the village will waste an hour or so. Oyuki. She didn't eat any fruits he gave her. She also explained to him yesterday that her diet consisted of snow, ice, or human semen, and that if he offered her hot food to her again, she'll be annoyed. He gave her a kiss to apologize to her, and fortunately, it was enough. Well let's just find the fruits first. Naruto said to himself in the end. He walked. He walked. And he walked. And once ten or so minutes passed, he saw someone he didn't expect to meet in the middle of a forest. And when he did, he greeted them with a wave of his hand. Oh. Raymond Wani-san. Are adorable, what are you doing here? 
the woman in the blue kimono was startled by his shout for a brief second, but when she took notice of the person who did it, a gentle yet large smile adorned her face almost immediately. She walked in his direction while holding a basket full of herbs in hand. The H E H E I'm hungry and is looking for some fruits I could eat. I see, are you alone? The woman asked after she looked right and left, only to see no sign of the infamous bloodthirsty Yukiana named Oyuki. She got her answer in the shape of a nod. Yup. Oyuki-chan said she's going to find a job she'd do. So, I'm alone today. For a brief second, the woman in blue became excited at the chance of being all alone in the middle of a forest, with someone who smells so good. And in her excitement, her eyes turned into a pair of slits, something she felt and quickly tried to hide. Although, Naruto still noticed it. And instead of being scared, he was actually excited. Uo, those eyes. Are you a Lamia, one e san She didn't answer him for a minute or so. But she did give it when her excitement started to calm down. No, I'm not, adorable. I'm a yakai, Akaname. I see. With excitement in his eyes, Naruto unstrapped the book on his belt and began to search for a race of monsters named Akaname. He found it in 10 seconds. An indigenous monster to the Yamatai region. Apart from their extremely long tongues, they are very human-like. Although their intelligence isn't too low, they are sometimes teased and ridiculed for their happy-go-lucky attitude when it comes to licking any man they can. Loving human sweat, semen, and any dirt on a human's body, when they find suitable prey they will continue licking them clean. Their long tongues are quickly able to send any man into the throes of agonized pleasure. They won't ever lick their prey to death, but the intense sessions can leave men unable to stand for days. If attacked by a group of Akaname, they will take turns licking their prey until he is completely dry. Oh that's so cool. Cool? The woman in blue was flabbergasted. She knew the book he held, she read it once too in the past, and much to her chagrin, her race's input was pretty near accurate. From her own understanding, there was nothing cool about it. And yet here the blonde called her race cool. Did he fall head first back when he was a babe? Oh wait, he lost his memories. Yeah. I mean, from what I can gather from this book, the writer only wrote two things when it comes to monsters one, their natural trait and second, their bad deeds. Haha, <laughs> living beings, monsters or humans are more than that, you know. Naruto said with nothing but honesty in his tone. And when she heard these words, the woman in front of him smiled gently, happy at his acceptance of her race's bad side. In her heart, a new feeling began to bubble beside her lust for him. I see I'm very happy to hear that. Anyway, you can just call me Aoi from now on. And why don't I help you with your fruits problem too now since my herb gathering is finished? I B G R A T E F U L and O, can you teach me which fruit is edible and which one isn't too? A R A R A, of course. Let big sister teach you all about fruits, okay? Later. They shared many things, although Naruto didn't have much to tell to the Akane elder sister. She did, however, have many things she wanted to share with him. Walking on the road toward Yamatai village, Naruto was writing something in a note he got from Aoi. As for what he was writing. Akaname's tongue become longer and thicker the older they get, by the time they reached 50 years old, and Akaname's tongue can fully wrap a man from his head to his feet. Well the muscle in the tongue in question will also become so strong that no man could break free once he got caught. After Aoi was done with her lecture on fruits, Naruto asked her to tell him about Akaname, something that she knew that the book didn't write. And much to his happiness, there were many unwritten facts about the race that the writer of Monsterpedia didn't write. Of course, time was not on their side. Aoi had to open her stand, and thus, she ran back to the village half an hour before he started his return. As for Naruto himself, he was more than happy to take his time, so he could write everything Aoi told him in his note. H-U-M-H-U-M so much nice things about Akaname, and you didn't write them in your book. T-S-K, T-S-K, bad writer. Naruto chided a little as he smacked the book strapped to his waist a few times. And after he did this, the blonde spent his time walking back to the village while making sure to memorize the scenes of the beautiful forest beside the road. This place was beautiful. Soon, Naruto reached a small bridge that'd lead him to the village. And after he crossed it, he saw two familiar women. Oninja one e san and Samurai one e san Naruto greeted the two guards with a small wave of his hand, something they responded with a small, somewhat stiff nod. Naruto let out a smile here. From what he heard, the two were guards stationed in Yamatai village by a nearby elven village to protect the human village, just in case someone hostile from the outside tries to enter. That was the reason they attacked Oyuki a few days ago, after all. Good day to you too, Naruto Dono. Don't be too stiff now, Jekka, you might scare him off. And you're too carefree, Kasumi. You're making us look bad and unprofessional. As the two elves began to banter with each other, Naruto blinked his eyes and unstrapped the book on his shoulder once again. She found a page about the samurai elf in no time. 
An elf native to the Yamatai region, she follows the Bushido Code. Originating in Yamatai village, the Bushido Code had a profound influence on the nearby elven village. However, the Bushido Code has long been a thing of the past in Yamatai village and only lives on in the elven village. The samurai elf is on a mission to preserve peace and order in the area, removing outsiders by force. Since she is both an elf and a trained warrior, a human warrior would struggle to match her in combat. When her opponent is a man, she prefers using pin techniques. After defeating him, she will rape him. Despite the Bushido code, this act is triggered by her monster instincts. She gets along well with the Kanoichi elf, and pairs of them are frequently seen patrolling the area. Hummed, Naruto turned the page to the right and found another page, this time for the Kanoichi elf. An elf native to the Yamatai region that has been trained in the arts of ninjutsu. Ninjutsu was developed in Yamatai village, but now only lives on in the nearby elven village. Wanting to defend her home area, she faithfully defends Yamatai village. If an outsider enters without permission, she will prey on them with her Kanoichi skills. Due to her duty, she gets along well with the samurai elf. By the time Naruto finished his reading, he turned his attention forward, only to see that the two elf warriors were no longer in front of him. He got his answer when a long arm wrapped around his shoulders and a face hidden under a mess of hair and a black mouth mask appeared on the right side of his face. Oh my, you don't believe everything that book says, right, cutie pie. For a quick second, Naruto became stiff, startled at the sudden reappearance of the Kanoichi elf, who previously stood a few meters in front of him. Although when he realized that it was her, he relaxed his shoulders once again. And he gave an answer to her question too. Of course not. From what I see, this book seems to only contain monster girls' natural traits and bad habits. Seemed satisfied with his answer, the Kanoichi elf used her other hand to pinch his cheek. All the while, the samurai elf was giving him a sisterly head pat. But boy why don't you follow us to our house and get some lunch. We have some onigiri if you want. Most men in the world would know the hidden message behind those words. But Naruto still knew about everything and pretty much only knew that the two were guards who had been protecting the village for years, immediately put his trust in them without any doubt whatsoever. And thus, he nodded. I just ate fruits, but sure. Anything for some rice. Plus, he could ask the two about elves and their true cultures, their traits, and many more that the Monsterpedia didn't tell him. Unknown to him, the two elves were having large grins on their face, although Jekka the samurai elf held it much better than her companion. The two elves' house were not that far from the bridge, although it was pretty small for two people. Of course, Naruto made his question known to the two. And they were more than happy to tell him. True elf like us born from the seeds of a great tree. Unlike human, we don't need the act of defecation, and that's why we don't have toilet in our house. As for bathing, we'd rather to take a bath in the river. That's also why their house looked pretty small from the outside, because actually, they only needed two bedrooms and one living room. I see. With a rather cute serious look on his face, Naruto was writing this information he was told in his note at a quick rate. And after he finished, he asked another question. What do elves eat then? And if they don't defecate, then how does the food remains come out? Because she was still waiting for her partner to finish up the food and preparing the bed, Jekka was the one who answered Naruto's question. We eat food similar to human, although our main diet is still semen. Like most monster girls, the semen we absorb become our mana, or energy, while the food we ate got squeezed and became liquid that we can shoot from our vagina like peeing in human case, although ours uses is to make plants healthy. Ooh. -oh. Naruto was gleaming in the eyes, happy that he was getting so much information about the elf race that the Monsterpedia writer didn't write about. Still, it was not enough. He wanted to know the monster girls better. Is there anything interesting you can tell me, Jekini? Just as she wanted to tell him another piece of information about the elf race, Jekka closed her mouth when she saw her friend was coming with a tray of food in hands. Of course, but why don't you tell us about yourself next, Naruto? Just to make it fair. Naruto didn't mind. But he didn't know what to say too, although when he a tray of food was placed in front of him, he took one ball of rice and started to munch on it. It took him less than 10 seconds to finish it. I don't mind, but I don't know what to say, you know. It was a signal for you can ask me anything if you want to basically. But Jekka was too reserved to ask the question she and her friend wanted to ask. Asumi didn't have such a problem. Oh my then why don't you tell me what could we do to make you willing to sleep with us, hmm. Once again, the Kanoichi woman was beside Naruto with her left hand wrapped around his shoulders while her breasts were pushing against the side of his face. Naruto took that question seriously without any blush whatsoever. 5000 G for one woman, one night. Jekka, who just now was about to smack the head of her partner, suddenly sputtered and coughed a little. As for Kasumi, she was grinning from ear to ear. If he was serious, then she didn't need the chloroform she prepared for him. Still before Jekka could calm herself. 
Ara. Why so pricey, Naruto-kun? Don't you want to sleep with big S-I-S-T-R-S? Basumi said, trying to haggle the price Naruto put for himself. After all, well elves like her and Jekka didn't need much for living expenses thus they've saved a pretty nice sum of money, 5000G was not a little amount of money. Even normal prostitutes only placed a fee of 100G for one night. Nua, Oyuki-chan said if I really want to see whether a woman really love me or not, they've to pay me at least that much. She forbids me to sleep around only to satisfy someone's lust. I see, so if I want to prove that I really love you, I have to pay 5000 G, is that right? Yup. Dekka, who was about to straighten his belief wanted to say something. But before she could, her usual goofy partner suddenly gave her a very frightening glare, one that promised nothing but pain. Thus, she meekly waited. Ufufu, you, you're just too adorable. Ignoring her need and desire to have her way with him for a moment, Kasumi leaned her face down and gave Naruto a small kiss on the nose, something that made him crouch his nose just a little. After she did, a poof of smoke appeared in her right hand, and after the smoke was cleared, a bag of gold can be seen. She gave it to Naruto. There should be 10,000 G there, Naruto-kun. Just remember to come here later this night, okay? Okay. Happy because he got the money, which mean both Kasumi and Jekka honestly fell in love with him, Naruto gave them the brightest grin he could make. Kasumi gave his head a few pats when she saw this. Anyway, you should eat. We elves doesn't need to eat that much food unless we really want to. Hi. Twenty minutes after Naruto went home, Jekka walked in her friend's direction with nothing but seriousness on her face. Why did you do that? You know that stupid Yukiana is forcing her innocent husband into a prostitution. Kasumi, however, did not look amused at her friend's words. Well she did. But behind that amusement, her eyes conveyed another thought. Are you kidding? Firstly, why do you think a yuki on like her need money? Deku wasn't able to conjure an answer to that question. Secondly, you know how overprotective a yuki on a can be. They'd rather freeze their mate in the middle of a blizzard than to let another woman touch him. Again, Jekka cannot find any argument for that one. And so, she decided to give up and ask the simplest question. Then tell me, why do you think Koyuki's doing this? I think she wants to create a hive, with that boy as the central point of it. But Naruto. Oyuki chan I got money. Naruto said as he entered the bedroom in the big shrine. And much to his joy, his mate was there, sitting on their bed, and was giving him a raised eyebrow after she heard his words. Her questions were simple. How much and who? Us should be 10,000, and it's the elves we met when we came here. The Yuki Ana gave him a small nod, then signaled for him to take a seat on her lap, which Naruto did as quickly as he can, where he then wrapped his arms around her neck. Oyuki kissed the top of his head and returned his hug with her own embrace, after she took the bag of money from his hands and placed it on the desk beside the bed. It was his, so she won't ever touch even one G inside. You may sleep with them tonight. MNN. Naruto nodded against his lover's nape, not really saying anything except a small muffled sound Oyuki didn't understand. Still, she had a feeling that he wanted something from her. Is there something that you want, husband? Small it was, Oyuki's heart began to beat nervously when she noticed the book hanging on her mate's belt. Fortunately for her though, when she looked down at his face, he was giving her a pout instead of a glare. I said, can I have a kiss? Even though it's just a few hours, I really missed you. The Yukiana smiled a little at the adorableness of her husband, though, she did grab him by his buttock and lifted him up until he was at the same face level with her, where the boy immediately placed his hands on her cheeks, left and right respectively. You're spoiled, you know. Be but you're the one said that yo. Long, blue tongue shot forward at Naruto's mouth when he was talking, stuffing his mouth with the appendage without mercy. Naruto himself shivered in delight when his mate did this. A few small, weak, and muffled mules came out of his throat as the blonde tried to lean his face forward until his lips could touch hers. Wanting to tease him, Oyuki made her tongue longer, gagging her husband even more and making him chalk a little bit. And if he decided to push forward, her tongue would slide down into his throat. Naruto's answer was to pinch her cheek. The NHMM, MKHM Uyaunun, Am. Don't make your tongue longer, Baka were Naruto's actual words, but since he had a long blue appendage in his mouth, everything was muffled and pretty much cannot be understood by anyone who heard it. Boyuki didn't understand too, but since her husband didn't seem to enjoy her tease, she decided to stop and shortened her tongue with her magic. And the moment she did, Naruto pressed his lips against her, conveying his love once again for her, although wordlessly. She accepted his feeling with all of her heart. Oh, dark god. She was so in love with this human. Later. As the sun set and the night came, Naruto walked out of the shrine toward the direction of the house of Jekka and Kasumi, with a small spring on each step. To him, today was a good day. 
he got a free book of monsters, learned many things about fruits, Akaname, and elves, and last but not least, he met two other women who fell in love with H.I.M. Don't forget he was also 10,000 G wealthier, of course. H.U.M. Because he was walking with his preferred speed, it took him about 15 minutes before he arrived at the duo elves' house. Knock. Knock. Wani san, are you both home? Naruto waited for a whole five minutes, but when he heard no sign of a living being in the house, he blinked his eyes several times. Huh. Were they out? Naruto, you're here already. Just as wanted to knock on the door again, a familiar professional voice came from his back. And when he turned around, Naruto saw Jekka, the samurai elf. Although this time, she did not wear her armors over her revealing bodysuit, which left her in a bodysuit that covered her arms and upper part of her chest, along with a long red hakama that covered her lower body. And oh, she didn't wear her jaw protector too. Yep, I slept for a few hours after Wayuki chan made me tired, so I'm now at full strength. I see I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, let's wait inside until Kasumi's back from the river. Amen, okay. After she said her words and told Naruto that Kasumi was taking a bath, she unlocked the door and let her invited guest enter first. After he did, she followed suit and closed the door behind her. Leaning his back on the wall, Naruto was waiting for her with a cute smile on his face. Gee. Before Naruto could say the word he wanted to say, the samurai elf pushed him onto the wall where he was leaning his back. Her hands were on the sides of his head, left and right respectively, while her knee was rubbing against his groin. And through all of this, there was no hint of gentleness on professionality on her face. Only a feral desire to mate. Ooh it. Naruto mewled in fear when he looked up and saw Jekka's face look like less a girl, and more like a beast who was currently starving for meat. His meat. DG Jekka, knee I I am scared. For the answer, the elf warrior lifted him up with her knee until they were face to face, although Jekka in question leaned her face until her face was beside his, where she began to nibble on his earlobe. Naruto found this action to be pleasant. And then then, it tickles. Naruto breathed out shyly after he wrapped his arms around the samurai elf, his eyes were closing from the action she was doing to his ear. After five minutes passed, Jekka stopped her nibbles, but still kissed the reddening earlobe with loving gentleness. And then she spoke. The samurai woman spoke, pouring all of her heart into each word she said. And at the end of it, she gave him a soft kiss on the cheek. So please don't be scared of me again. It really broke my heart when you said that. Now you understand. I'm sorry, Jekani. Don't be sorry, be nude. Before I rip your clothes with my claws. After she said those, she lowered her knee and let Naruto's feet touch the floor. His face was blushing from the embarrassment he felt, but he did slowly disrub all of his clothes. The key word here was slowly. For each second Naruto wasted on small movement, Jekka's face was becoming more feral. And of course, the blonde saw this although, instead of fear this time, he felt something throb pleasantly in his heart. What was this feeling, he wondered. A minute later, Naruto was fully nude. And Jekka wasted no time to grab him by the shoulders, trying to push him down to the floor. Hard it was, Naruto didn't budge. One each hand I isn't it better if we do it on a bed. Naruto said shyly with red painting his cheeks after he looked up at the samurai elf. And by now, her face was already like that of a beast instead of a woman, complete with lengthened fangs and slitted eyes. And here I thought I told you about us monster girls and control cutie. Unlike Wayuki whose voice became one with the wind, Jekka's voice became a lot sharper and somewhat deeper. Not really beast-like, but it was still blush-inducing for Naruto. Her voice just tickled his eardrums in the right way. Ninjutsu. Not. Before Naruto could give the woman his answer, a long red scar flew and tied his legs together. And when she saw this, Jekka was quick to push him down to the floor. Thud. Oh. Before they fell, Jekka had wrapped her arms around his head, pinning his face against her chest, and protected the back of his head, reducing the impact he got. The woman, however, didn't move her breasts away from his face even after they fell, seemingly consented smothering him with their softness. Naruto struggled. You're late. Sorry, in my defense, I didn't know he'd come so soon. The two conversed, seemingly uncaring about Naruto's muffled plea to be released. Although, when his struggle began to weaken, Jekka did not waste her time and quickly released her judo pin hold over him. At last released, Naruto was breathing hard, staring at them with a slightly dazed look on his face. And this sight triggered the two women's lust like a bomb. Alright, whose turn fur? Mine. Like a beast that had been waiting for its turn, Jekka straddled Naruto the moment she saw her chance, no hint of her usual professional attitude on her face whatsoever. Her womanhood, wet in anticipation spread open and showed its wetness to the boy for a few seconds, before the samurai girl slammed it down and took his member in one gulp. Still dazed, the blonde can only let out a small groan of pleasure from the warm feeling of Jekka's womanhood. Spurt. 
Oh, you're so going to walk home without the feeling of your legs if insertion alone made you come, Naruto. The samurai teased without any real heat behind her tone. Although her face was a different case altogether unlike Naruto who didn't seem that tired after he came, Jekka was sweating from the amount of overflowing energy she had to expel if she didn't want to explode from the inside out. That was just how much energy Naruto's kun contained. Of course, Jekka's warrior pride didn't let her give up even if she wanted to. After all, there was no way she was going to fall just because she had absorbed one ejaculation from a boy. She was a monster. I am sorry, Jekka Nii. Merely thought Jekka was sweating because of her excitement and not because of her sudden tired state, Naruto apologized nervously and shyly, something that made the woman begin to fasten her up and down movement. She had no chance to back down the second she saw such an adorable face. Geez, I didn't expect this I guess we just have to rape him together. Of course, Kasumi realized the reason that made her friend suddenly sweat bucket almost instantly. And from this understanding, she decided to help her partner to fuck the boy on the floor. WYMPPHH. Before Naruto could talk, the Kanoichi elf wrapped her legs around his head and pushed her groin against her face, gagging him with her womanhood and kissing his whole face with her lewd and already excited lower mouth. Her thighs tightened their grip on his head when he struggled. As for his hands that were trying to push her away they were not a problem, but she'd probably tie them up if they became an annoyance. Shush now, little guy. I don't want to be rough with you, but if you keep being cute and struggle, I might. Despite her words being slightly muffled because of the thighs covering his ears, Naruto caught Kasumi's meaning instantly. Deku was going feral don't make me do too, unless you want to be treated like nothing but a toy through the night. Mewled in nervousness, Naruto gave the woman riding his face a small, shy nod. The boy and now. The moment Naruto stopped his meaningless struggle, Kasumi grabbed him by the hair, leaned her upper body forward, then pressed her groin even harder to his face and began to ride it with all of her passion. Nose and mouth buried inside a Kinoichi elf's cunt. Head trapped between a pair of very soft eyes. Eyes covered by the Kinoichi's navel. And all the while, his member was being milked by a warrior who kept going hour after hour, although she milked it with her hands or mouth sometimes. Late at night, the position changed. And this happened until the dawn came and the light of the sun started to appear on the horizon. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.